uh, hello everyone uh, good evening thank you so much everyone uh, for joining uh, first of all i would like to welcome all of you jo aap log join kar rahe hain is webinar ke liye and uh, today we have uh, the privilege of hosting uh, dr uh, sk smarya with us uh, he is a chief surgeon and chairman at uh, max hospital with a remarkable journey of almost 40 years in medicine and orthopedic surgery uh dr maria has reshaped the future of joint replacement and orthopedic care uh, he is known for his work uh, having performed more than 15000 joint uh, replacement surgeries encompassing knee hips shoulders and even uh, other joints as well uh his expertise doesn't stop there uh his pioneering efforts in bilateral joint replacement and computer assisted surgeries have set new standards in the medical community so on behalf of everyone uh, present here i would just like to warmly welcome dr s k s maria once again thank you thank you very much yeah. uh sure so to everyone to give you a little overview of what we are going to be discussing today uh so this is uh, a webinar on uh, staying steady uh strategies against fall prevention right uh fall is something that we we are not speaking enough about in india uh as per a study one in four seniors in india are at a risk of falling and every year in india 20 lakh seniors are injured and out of which 10 lakh succumb to deaths due to fall accidents so uh, we feel that it is time and it is very very important for us to talk about falls and ways and means to prevent falls every day in our homes as well and uh, so uh, just as an overview the things that we'll be covering today would be common causes of falls in seniors identifying and addressing home safety hazards uh, tips for improving uh, balance and strength yeah. the the importance of staying active and healthy for seniors and the importance of proactive fall prevention and uh, at the end of the webinar we have a sp special surprise session for all the attendees uh, so we i would request all of you to just stay back for 5 uh, minutes after the session is over uh, with having said that i think we should uh, start the webinar and we will have question around at the end of the webinar and i would request anyone who has any questions to just keep on putting them in the comment section and we will take it up after the session is completed right uh so i will start with the first question that i think is uh one of the most uh, important questions that we will uh, be addressing today so uh dr maria uh why do older people fall more or what is the reason of more falls in senior citizens at the outset thank you very much for having me today and uh, even more to the people who have spared their valuable time to join us this afternoon so as we i will use the word mature rather than old as we mature in age obviously changes take place and why do we have more falls it is part of the changes in the body and in our surroundings and the inability for the body to quickly turn around and understand that it might fall now causes it's basically the neuromuscular system which is like the skeleton or the structure of the body when it is not balanced sufficiently that a person falls so when does that happen that happens when there is neuromuscular incoordination what does that mean there can be neurological issues there can be bone related issues and there can be muscular issues neurological issues essentially can be the brain or the spinal cord so let's take a flow the brain if you have any brain related 
degenerative disorders. We have known of disorders like Parkinsonism. There is at time calcification of the brain tissue itself. So all these lead to some kind of disbalance, essentially indirectly through weakening the neuromuscular tissue. So as you come down, weakness in the eyes, people at times have not got their eyes checked, have not got proper spectacles. As they grow old, they are less demanding. They wouldn't even say that I'm not seeing very well. The spectacles numbers would change. The floor would look awkward and takes very little to tip and fall. Come down a little further, you reach the ears. When there are hearing issues, there's again, hearing is not only the noises you hear, but also in the ear, there is a structure which leads to balancing the body. Sometimes if you have a blocked ear, you find that you are a little wobbly. So that is because there is the balance is temporarily affected. But when it gets permanently affected with age, you can understand the person can easily fall again. Now come down a little further down. Then it is the neck. Most of us, as we mature, there is something called cervical spondylosis where the bones start growing more, the tissue, the, the discs in the neck become narrow and they start pressing the nerve roots which go down again into the body. So this is due to spondylosis again, balance issues. We go down further, it is the spinal cord and if we further go down, hips are rarely a major cause of falling unless there has been an old injury to the hip. But the wear and tear of the knee joints which become deformed, which become misshapen, which are painful and which do not coordinate well with the changes in the surface on which we walk. The incidence of tripping and falling is great. And finally going down to the bottom of the body is the foot and ankle. Once again, the deformities in the feet, not only in the elderly, especially in people with diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, where the shape of the feet changes grossly. Again, to coordinate on the surface, Walking on the plain surface is not a problem. What happens is when you're walking on a little disturbed surface or uneven surface, when you put your foot on that and it is uneven, you are not even aware that the signals from the brain, from the foot, quickly shoot up to your brain and tell the brain that you are on an uneven surface. The brain quickly adjusts to that and is sort of walking and now thinks, creates that uneven surface into an even platform for walking, even though it is uneven. So I hope I haven't confused the issue. What I'm saying is that the brain will adjust your feet to the uneven surface and make it as if it is an even surface. So these are the intrinsic or the body related largely situations where you can lose your balance or fall more so in the elderly with the weaker musculature and less strength overall in the neuromuscular tissue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so sir, as you said that there are a lot of reasons, intrinsic uh, body reasons with, because of which there can be a fall that can occur in the seniors, right? But are there any external uh, factors as well that can cause this fall around us like in a normal uh, household? Oh yes. Environment is one of the major causes. 
even healthy people who have not much of what I've just described over the last few minutes, mm -hmm. these people who are relatively healthy, they can fall because of some of the reasons I will now enumerate. Most important and easily controllable is good lighting in your surroundings, particularly in the toilet of the elderly. When you go to the toilet or any surface, it should not be wet. You easily slip on it and sustain multiple injuries. And also in the toilet, you must have something called grab bars, which we have all seen. So that in case you are losing balance, or even if you are not losing balance, but you are able to hold these grab bars, take support, and even get up from a WC without losing balance or control. Other things are no loose pieces of the carpets or dharis or anything on the floor. If a person is not having good control, then the person should without any hesitation or shame or feeling odd, should take the support of either a walking stick or a walker as per requirement. And when you take these, you've got to make sure that these have rubber at the bottom. Without that, if it, the end is a wooden stick or if there is metal at the bottom, then the chances of slipping and falling are very high. So these are the, and the other thing which is important is if you have pets in the house, pets should not be running loose at poor times and the pet should be well relating to the elderly in the family. The pet should know how to respect the space of the concerned person much as the concerned person respects the space of the pet. It may sound a bit strange, but particularly the dogs and cats are very good at this. If you've got a new pet, then it takes time for them to adjust. That is when you have to be careful. You don't want the senior person or the mature person to lose control, getting startled by something really shooting suddenly in front or something coming in between legs and losing control. So these are the kind of external factors you have to be very careful. The person should learn how to dry after bathing. Sit down and dry yourself. Sometimes wiping yourself when you're standing on a wet floor, you lift up one leg to dry it, you're bound to fall. So these are the various things and most of us know them. It is only to keep them in your mind and keep thinking about them, talking about them, and reminding each other to be careful about it. And more often than not, we can avoid any disasters with this. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so, when seniors, there we have discussed the internal factors, we have uh, discussed the external factors. So, if we were to throw more light on the internal factors, how are, how can... Uh, we as caregivers support our parents or how our seniors can strengthen themselves to battle uh, fall prevention better, to battle fall better, I'm sorry. So basically the intrinsic factors are A, if you're having any problem, whether with the brain, spinal cord, eyes, ears, the neck or knees, then the concerned doctor should be consulted. Not every time you visit a doctor do you, will you be subjected to surgery. At the same time, not every time that you need surgery, it can be done because of the maturity of age and the risks. So a lot of pros and cons have to be weighed. In this case, one has to take the help of supports, etc. And if very severe, sometimes one has to use the wheelchair. So on the other hand, if these factors are being controlled well and everything else is okay, 
The most important thing are the exercise programs, keeping active, walking, doing activities of daily living on their own. Elderly should not be made to sit down in the house. You don't do anything because we'll do everything. Don't worry. God has given us everything. Why you need to work? It's all the more reason you need to be involved in it. You need to be excited about doing something. Ladies may love to go into the kitchen and why not men today? Cook one thing once in a while, even if not daily, your favorite thing. Gentlemen could go into the garden. They don't need to squat down to dig the garden. They can have a small calipers to prune the leaves. If nothing else, just walk into the garden and talk to the plants. Today, it's a well-known science that plants love to be spoken to. When you speak, it's interesting, it's scientific, the plants grow better, the flowers are brighter, and you get a great feeling. Oh, yesterday I spoke to this flower, and look, today it's smiling back at me. So having said that, you need to be encouraged to do things, to go meet people, to talk, and least and last, I'm sure in everybody's near, nearby vicinity, there are other elders. Sit down, discuss things, talk good things with each other, talk about the past, the lovely time you have had. Talk about, you know, such, keep it to the positive side of things. That gets your brain ticking well. We have all had difficult times. Many of us have issues in the family. But then, believe me, nobody is, you know, immune from that. So those negativities should be avoided. So that keeps you going, that keeps you walking, that keeps you energized, that helps you exercise more. Then you come to physiotherapy. If you have focal weaknesses, there is one particular arm is weak. Unfortunately, if somebody had a mild stroke or any kind of neurological disease, say Parkinsonism, these people should be supported with physiotherapy help. With that, you improve what has weakened over the time. So try to get your strength, energy, and as I said, if you see what I've said, your physical, your mental, and your social health with your friends, with flowers, all this put together, is what is called well-being. Try it. Try it. And believe me, you will be suddenly finding a lot of happiness and a lot of purpose in your life. So, and once you have a purpose, you remain active and you walk around, you exercise around, your neuromuscular structures are stronger. You're not going to fall. Why should you fall? In the worst case scenario, those who have strong muscles, etc., they can break their own fall. Their muscles, etc., are strong. Their reflexes are better. If they are going to fall, they may be able to correct that fall. If they are still going to fall, they may be able to break the fall. If there is something nearby, they can reach out to hold it. Or if they are falling, they will try to put their particular parts of the body, maybe go sidewards so that the effect of the fall is minimal. So all this is related to the strength, the reflexes, the energy levels and the will, the will power to lead a happy, healthy, strong life. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, with the conversation that uh, we just had and the points that you have talked about, you have emphasized on the importance of psychological, sociological, and physical strength. But initially, also initially in this uh, discussion, you had also shared about stability being an important part in fall prevention. So, is there any way that seniors can improve the stability, like any external uh, help that they can get to improve their stability? I did mention it in broken parts, but just to summarize it, yes, either you do an intrinsic strengthening of your neuromuscular tissues, or you will, if you can't do it or it does not happen, then you need supports to walk. And I did say 
there is no shame in using supports to walk. In fact, at times, mature people walking with a stick, they often uh, command a lot of respect from people around them. And I think this feeling that I will not use a stick, it's below my dignity. It's no longer about dignity. It's, a, it's about your stability and the strength that you require with the support to walk without falling. So these are the things which you can do. Sure, sir. Uh, so we have spoken about uh, fall prevention, uh, how we can prevent falls. But I would also like you to touch upon that if a fall has happened, what would be the first uh, five things that you would suggest someone who has fallen and also to someone who is a caregiver, like a child or someone who is taking care of a senior person? What would be the five things that we should do? And what are the, let's say, three things that we should absolutely not do? Okay, first two more things. Somebody just put up about blood pressure. Yeah. Okay, that's a very valid point. And the valid point that if your blood pr pressure is really fluctuating, it indirectly affects your brain. And that is where you can lose balance. And you do have, for example, sometimes if you're lying down in bed and you suddenly get up, you feel boozy in the head. That is because the blood is suddenly not there in the brain to the required amount or flows out of the brain when you suddenly sit up. So there is one thing you need to do is when you get up in the morning, don't just shoot out of your bed. Sit on your bedside for about 10 to 20 seconds. Let your whole blood circulation get normalized in the body and then get out of the bed. If you suddenly turn out of your bed and suddenly get up to go and do something, there is a reasonable chance in the elderly that you may, you know, sort of get the, the chakkar, what you call, you know, giddiness or wooziness and you can fall. The other thing which is really important in the elderly is low sodium levels, which these were the medical side which was uh, to be talked about. Hyponatremia or low sodium is one of the biggest causes. You certainly find that the senior person in the house is not talking properly, is, is feeling very drowsy, is feeling very lazy. Everything else has been checked up. There's no other problem. So the first thing that should come to mind is low sodium levels. And if the sodium goes really low, it can be dangerous. So a quick blood test is required or go to different uh, uh, medical specialists near you and get the sodium level corrected ASAP. So now your question, five things, five things. I mean, it, it, I have essentially spoken. It is, the first thing is, uh, your PowerPoint was five things to prevent the fall. Was that right? Um, yeah, as we have already touched upon that, sir. My question was that uh, in case of a fall, when a fall has happened, yes. Uh, what are the five things that we should do? And probably three things that we should absolutely avoid doing in yeah. case of fall. Yeah. First thing is that if somebody is actually fallen, you really need to get there, clear the area around you a little bit. Not too many people. This is not a circus. You have one or two people around you who can help you with what you're doing. You ask the patient, talk to the patient or the person at the moment. You haven't yet labeled as patient. Where is it hurting you the most? Do you think you can move your limbs? If the person can talk to you coherently, can move the limbs and can make an attempt to get up, that's fine. If the person is having a headache, which you doesn't usually come up that quickly. If the person is feeling can't see properly, patient cannot try and get up himself, then you need to support wherever the problem is. It's not important that the person is quickly lifted from where the person has fallen. You don't have to worry about lifting to put on the bed. 
if where the person has fallen is a clean, dry, proper place, let him rest for a while. If you find that slowly the, uh, the person is complaining of anything, particularly headache, which can, if the person has hit the head on the ground, that becomes a serious matter. Because often you can get a bleed in the head, which is called, uh, there is a layer in the brain called dura. And below the dura matter, above the brain, if the blood collects, there you tend to get, that is called subdural hemorrhage. And if that keeps going on, it can lead to focal weakness in the other limbs and body. So you have to keep the person under watch. If the head has been hurt for 24 hours, if the limbs have been hurt for at least four to six hours, because whenever you get hurt, it's surprising that the body mechanisms are such that in the beginning, you can still do a lot of things, but as the things cool down, the problem surface. You can get a hip fracture, where you can stand up because the fracture, the bone has broken, but it is in place. But if the person is saying it is hurting here, hurting here, then don't try to uh, say, do something and show me what you can do. No, make them comfortable. Transport properly. You will need to meet a specialist or any doctor physician in any emergency and may require an x-ray. So, fall, all symptoms will not come immediately. There is no rush to mobilize the patient. If there is an injury to the back or the hip or the head, these have to be treated very carefully. Not every time you'll find the hand limping like this, which is very obvious. If that is the case, you need to support it properly. So, these are the things you need to be careful about. Now, what shouldn't you do? What you shouldn't do? be in a hurry to do something. Quickly bring a glass of water and say, oh, have it, have it. Wait. Very rarely you may need to obviously go to the hospital and more often than not, you need to be empty stomach to do some tests, etc. So definitely nothing to eat and no more than a sip or two of water. Don't do that. If there is a limb which is looking awkward, don't try to set it yourself, pull it. Those things used to happen in old movies, etc. There's not a real life thing. Simply by pulling, you could cause so much pain, the patient can pass out. You won't know why the patient has passed out. And one more important thing is keep help at standby. Nearby, but not on the patient. Get ready to be mentally prepared if required to go to a hospital or a clinic nearby. So these are the factors. I mean, obviously there will be small factors. This was that largely these are the factors which are enough to secure you and make the person who's fallen comfortable. Yeah. Sure, sir. Uh, moving on. Uh, you have talked about the things that we should do and probably the first response is in case of a fall. Sometimes it also happens that there has been a fall, but uh, you know the repercussion starts to show in let's say two days or three days or something like that. So what are the warning signs that we need to be careful about? Usually the serious ones will not take two, three days. It will be 24 hours maximum. Okay. Most serious is a head injury. Next is a back injury into the spinal cord. After that is the injury to the hip joint. And finally, the injury to other limb bones like the wrists are very common, getting injured. And rarely if the person has fallen due to a twist and fallen due to a fracture of ankle. So either you fall and break the ankle or you break the ankle or you fall, it doesn't matter. But the thing is that it will be very painful. The ankle will start swelling over the next few hours. In the elderly, it's rare that with the fall, the knee joint will be a problem because that's how the fall structure is. But if that is also hurting, then wherever the problem is, that within 24 hours will show up. If then nothing showing up after 24 hours, one starts believing that God has been kind 
and not much harm has been done. Sure. Uh, so when we talk about falls, uh, it often happens that uh, uh, there is an injury. But what happens with seniors is we have often seen that it breaks their confidence. They don't want to walk again or they are afraid to uh, walk or do their daily activities. So is there a way we can help the seniors to regain their confidence and how important is it for them to regain that confidence? Uh, it, it's absolutely extremely important to bring them back with their confidence and back to their own lifestyle. Hopefully, there has been no structural damage, but one gets shaken up. Even younger people get shaken up. You fall off a motorcycle. You may not want to ride it for a long time. Similarly, for a person who's using a walker or a stick when they fall, if you otherwise fall, you can temporarily have a walker or a stick and then get your confidence back with support. But if you're already using it and you fall, we don't want the patient to go on a wheelchair. That really shatters the confidence. It's not difficult to bring the confidence back. And here we need the support also of the person concerned. I'm not calling them patients because they have no structural issue at the moment. Though our science says physical, mental, and social health, but I will refrain from saying they're patients because that's very quickly, very easily reversed. Yeah. Just pump them with confidence, pump them with energy, get them back into their social life and spend time with them. Either yourself or a physiotherapist or, a, or an empathetic, uh, empathic nurse can be very comfortable or any other family member to spend some time with them so that they feel that it's worth getting well. It's all about feeling of worth getting well because it has been a feeling of not being well. So when you get this feeling that I'm going to get back, it's worth my this thing, they get well. I, I Once a patient decides to get well, nobody can stop them from getting well. Sure, sir. Uh, so in this discussion, we have already spoken about, you have touched upon the importance of sodium and the importance of lifestyle and the importance of exercises. But if I were to ask you, uh, that are there any, uh, three or four exercises that you would recommend a senior who is suffering from instability or there is a possibility of all what they can do to improve their, uh, muscle strength and improve their stability as well. So the most important is everybody stands on legs. The first thing is to strengthen your legs and legs largely the knees because knees are bendable. And if when you stand, the knees lock. So if they don't lock properly, you'll wobble and fall. And to help them lock are the muscles in front of the thigh, which are termed as quadriceps muscles. The other ones are the hamstring muscles at the back of the bottom. So between, you have to strengthen the back bottom muscles, the hamstrings and the quadriceps, and you've done 50% or more of the strengthening of as far as stability of standing. You need to strengthen the spine muscles, that is the lower back muscles with exercises, the neck muscles, and something which is offhand but not directly with the uh, strength of the musculoskeletal is the deep chest breathing exercises. When you breathe well, you do deep breathing. You don't, you're not saying you're making your chest strong. You're getting more and more fresh air and oxygen, which improves the circulation. And oxygen circulation, the blood goes to all your muscles. It goes to the nerves. And it also, if nothing else, gives you a feeling of well-being. So these exercises, if you do with a physiotherapist for a few days, then you can do them on your own. Right. And so similarly, as you've spoken about the exercises, are there any uh, dietary habits or any particular foods that, we, that uh, the seniors need to uh, consume in order to improve their muscular strength? See, for the muscles, the go-to feed is proteins. And proteins can be in many ways. 
not everybody is a non vegetarian but believe me the vegetarian diet outsteps the non veg also at times there's such wonderful things beans dals paneer you know uh, uh, these uh, the, the rajma all these have fantastic amount of proteins so build up the muscles and the tissues with proteins having said that a sprinkle of carbohydrates fats minerals and vitamins is also useful but the main st structure or tissue of the muscles is built up the actually the muscle is protein and it is i don't want to go into the medical terminology it is that which needs replenishment but to get there to help it to get there you need all that i just mentioned besides the protein so a well balanced diet tilting in proteins is what you need to sort of focus on sure uh, we have uh, uh, discussed about the importance of uh, fooding habits we have discussed importance of exercises sociological physical psychological impacts but uh, on a comprehensive level sir is it important for seniors to change their lifestyles as well like is a lifestyle change important in order to uh, uh, prevent fall or improve their muscle strength and stability as well well if if somebody is not exercising somebody is sitting all the time some people start saying that the best thing that has happened to me is a wheelchair and do not want to socialize go out of the house walk out and worse of all do not want to do any exercises taught to them in specific now all this has to be reversed with everything in life with every step in life there are pros and cons the good part as you mature further is that more often than not you are not short of time so it is you yourself who is to blame if you do not want to get well you do not want to exercise you do not want to do things that you are being encouraged to do so principally motivation to do things and the person has to do the things himself right sir uh one last question that i have uh, for the forum is uh we one of the comments we saw talked about uh, the importance of uh, blood pressure when it comes to falls so is there any other uh, ailment or any other condition that we need to be careful about or the people who have that condition to be careful about because that condition can be more prone to falls or yes. is there any extra uh, care that we need to take for those people one most important thing that is diabetes uncontrolled diabetes suddenly fluctuation of sugar levels they can lead to semi consciousness and people fall that has to be kept under control and along with the other topics that i mentioned it's good you brought this up i was thinking in the end i will you know say that the biggest evil which needs to be controlled which is controllable but needs an effort is diabetes and that also can be controlled with exercises with walking etc besides the medicines and the doctor provided uh, support all these activities also help you to have a good control of sugar all right uh, so just one extension to the last question uh, arthritis is a problem that a lot of seniors face in india does having arthritis impact in uh, falls and do arthritis patient need to be extra careful about uh, the occurrence of falls see very severe joint arthritis leads to instability or when you take a few steps you may find suddenly that it becomes so painful that you are unable to control yourself but normally arthritis is so slowly progressing that around the time it, it is about to become a threat most people would either take a cane or a walker and the more outgoing and energetic maybe would have surgery to get it corrected and try to live how comfortably they can sure sir 
uh, I think we, I, you have answered all the questions that we had, but there are some questions in the comments that I will uh, ask you. So one of the questions that one of the listeners had uh, put in the comments is, uh, how to tackle osteoporosis issues, which could also lead to falls? Osteoporosis usually doesn't lead to fall because of osteoporosis. Right. Osteoporosis is actually very, it, it's usually in situation like a hip fracture. Mm -hmm. Due to osteoporosis, you fall. But usually you fall and break the bone in non-direct stru weight-bearing structures. Like the wrist, you will fall and break. You don't break the wrist and fall. Similarly, yeah. In the spine, you don't, for the spine, you will not usually break the spine while just walking. You'll fall and break it because it's soft and spongy. On the other hand, hip is one structure where there is sort of a stick, like a shepherd stick at the end where the ball meets with the socket in the pelvis that a sudden jerk or sudden, that also has to have a, even if it is mild injury, that can break and you fall. So in those cases, yes, due to osteoporosis, you can have falls. And osteoporosis is a subject in itself which needs a full treatment starting from below upwards depending on the severity of osteoporosis which is fairly well defined with a test called a bone densitometry or DEXA scan. Okay. Uh, the other question that we have is, sir, for dementia patients, is there any particular activity that they need to do in order to overcome the risk of falling or they should well, always be with some companion? They, no, the, the, this is something in the prerogative of a neurophysician. Right. They must, because today there's so much is happening, so many new medications, so many new things. However, if it is not being controlled and it is after taking proper treatment, then the person will need a caretaker for safety. Because if we don't do that, then the chances of uh, falling and then that becomes very difficult thereafter because rehabilitation also becomes a problem. Okay. Uh, the next question we have is, sir, do you think there are any products for fall prevention that is not in the market in India or you think which is somewhere outside India but needs to come to India? Yes, there are there are gadgets now available mm -hmm. which can signal that the person may fall. These are like you know like Apple watches. They, those will signal and they are connected. They can give you a signal that this person it's like an ECG. You mm -hmm. tie something and the ECG can be picked up for 24 hours. So you have this when the person is walking, if his walking pattern is changing, it gives the signal that there's something not right. So this is when one can intervene and prevent a fall. And there are also gadgets in extension, including these. If a person actually falls, they will beep a few people, including your closest, maybe your son or your daughter or your friend. It can even be correlated with a hospital or e even uh, unlikely, but with a social service uh, setup. So yes, these electronic gadgets are coming in. They are being used and these are called fall prevention or fall detection watches. Right. Uh, there's a question by uh, Divyani ji, sir. Uh, I am sure you have covered this in the session, but this is a very particular question that uh, can you suggest any particular exercise for people who get sudden imbalance? Sudden imbalance means there's something definitely else besides just weakness of the muscles. Okay. Because this does not happen suddenly. Sudden imbalance, one has to be worried if it's a neurological. If it is, then you immediately need attention. You have to worry about anything happening in the brain. I don't mean to create a scare but one of the commonest thing is bleed in the brain. A right. pre-stroke, semi-stroke, early stroke, one is that. The other is a physical sudden imbalance and that usually would come from either the ankle or the hips. If any of the bones in an awkward position or with a jerk, 
If it breaks, then there is sudden imbalance. Those are easy to handle and treat. But if those are okay, all other limbs are fine, then sudden imbalance could be due to sudden BP uh, fluctuation, sudden sugar fluctuation, or something to do with the brain, or sodium levels falling down suddenly. So this needs medical attention immediately. Sure. Uh... I think we have uh, covered almost all questions. I will just ask if anybody else has any questions. Could you please put them down in the comment section? Yes, doctor. Uh, this is Prakash here. Uh, my father is almost 77 years old now. Uh, he has got a Parkinson uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, disease. Like he forgets uh, certain things. Uh, like he, he cannot walk properly. He, he doesn't believe that his, his strength, you know, he has got his strength on the weaker side. So like he can, can't walk on his own. He forgets every now and then. For, for instance, if a fan is running in a, you know, 10 feet, uh, uh, you know, in the same room away from him, he will, he will tell somebody like fan is running. I'm going to switch off. If, you know, again, like we, we go and switch it off. Then again, after some time, he want to switch it on and he will go running and you know you know uh, walking and uh, try to do that same way so like all the time we need to keep monitoring whether he is moving or not like that kind of attention is required and it is always like it is not possible for everyone to keep an eye on him every time so like you know fall has become an you know uh, a regular pattern almost i should say like uh, he has fallen around 10 times in in the last uh, uh, two months time uh, so how to avoid this kind of scenario, how to bring it to his notice that he needs care. He needs to ask for help if he needs something to be switched on or switched off. Even if a coffee cup is served to him, he will go to the dining table and to keep it there. He will forget that he cannot walk. How to handle such a scenario? Sure. Thank you. Sorry, there are certain things which God has done which are very difficult to handle and I feel your pain and your difficulty. Now, if it was only the switch of light, there was an answer that you give him a hand switch to various this thing near where he sits or lies down. But like you said, he wants to go do things himself, which is a double-edged sword. One side, he wants to remain active and do things. Other side, he doesn't know what he's doing. So in this case, I think besides neuro help, it has to be a full-time caretaker, my friend. We, we can't really, neurological are the only, neural tissue is the only one which is the most difficult to regenerate. Even the heart can. Heart can be transplanted, but the neural tissue in the brain can't as of today. People are working on it. People, there are tens of things being done for Parkinsonism. There are various kinds of surgeries, various kinds of medicines. So my suggestion will be before we rule out everything, meet a good neurologist, a good neurosurgeon, get some answers, see a couple of patients treated by them, talk to those families, feel the confidence. And if you get it, then proceed with that treatment with hope. Right. Okay. Uh, Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would request all the attendees to kindly uh, put down their questions in the comment section. Uh, sir, one more question we have got. Uh, so Kishore is asking that uh, my mother, uh, 91, has bow legs. Uh, she can walk a little. Is it safe to walk with bow legs? Well, I mean, you have to walk. So keep a support with you. These bow legs are at least 15, 20 years old. And I would have recommended if anybody has family starting to bow, please get it corrected at that time. At 91, I wouldn't suggest any intervention. So your best bet is to keep a support in hand. Sure. And uh, Shashi Jain is asking, any supplements for uh, calcium for vegetarians or is, is supplements taken on daily basis bad for health? I mean, see, most of these things are so well available in your diet. I strongly believe more in diet than in tablets. Unless you are grossly uh, low in any of the particular thing, which you will get to know with tests. Suppose you're doing tests and you're very low in certain minerals or vitamins, then you use medicines till you get okay. 
after that please come on uh, to the you know vegetables and fruits and milk and uh, things like that and uh, come off medicines i mean they're not the best all the time sure and one last question that i'll be taking sir uh one uh, i'll just read out the name uh, mr rohit has asked that roles of nurse or uh, care staff in preventing patients fall how big is that role and uh, if nurse patient ratio is high would it affect it's always good to have a, a proper nurse patient ratio but we are blessed in our country because most patients when they are in the hospital they have family near them and when they are at home then it is always ratio is 1 is to 1 then you don't have this nurse going to the neighbor's house to see somebody it's always with you in the hospital uh, for whatever good measure patients have their attendants with them so somebody near the patient who has a predilection to a fall is always safer and required sure sir uh, i don't think we have uh, any more questions to take if anybody has any questions i think i will just open this forum for two three more minutes and then we will close the questions as well uh good evening doctor good my ha huh, my mother he, she is uh, 85 years of age and she has been diagnosed with orthostatic tremors due to which she cannot stand for more than 20 seconds so uh, we have been told that it's quite incurable and you have to live with it she gets tremors all over the uh, lower part of the body ma'am i i agree it's difficult to cure this situation only okay, thing is to try and do some physio exercises encouragement involve in activities she sitting down give her some uh, even matter po chilne ke liye se do something with your hands so that there is some usage of the intrinsic muscles so don't give her needle and thread to do that she may hurt herself so give her a bag of peas say undo these today or no knives no needles etc ha and one last question doctor how do we prevent a fall during the night if she has to go to the uh, washroom you i said the first thing i started with is plenty don't shut off all the lights at night for the elderly okay, keep doctor. the lights on keep the bathroom dry make okay. sure there is no loose mat lying around and if the person is very If moderately unstable, there should be a walker or or a stick, and if it is more than that, then there has to be an attendant who should walk her to the toilet. Thank you, doctor, for this wonderful session. Thank you from us. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Can I speak in Hindi? Can I ask my question in Hindi? जी जरूर बहुत अच्छा लगेगा बोलिए. Okay, thank you, doctor. Doctor, मेरे को Parkinson है तो मेरे को right side में ये head में एंड हैंड में एंड फीट में पूरे ट्रेमर्स आते हैं और जब भी कोई टेंशन होती है तब और ज्यादा ट्रेमर्स इंक्रीज हो जाते हैं तो इसके लिए मैं वॉक करती हूँ वैसे तो मैं इवनिंग में एक घंटा तो मैं वॉक करना चाहिए मुझे या नहीं करना चाहिए मुझे बिल्कुल चाहिए सपोर्ट के साथ चलते रहना ये जिंदगी है अपने को ढीला मत छोड़िए जो कर सकते हैं करिए सपोर्ट लेके चलिए और हो सके तो टेंशन वाली बातें मत सोचिए ओके डॉक्टर थैंक यू डॉक्टर थैंक यू वेरी मच जी जी थैंक यू एवरीवन आई थिंक वी हैव कवर्ड ऑल द क्वेश्चंस एंड आई होप इट वाज एन इनसाइटफुल सेशन सबके लिए सर थैंक यू सो मच अगेन यू वेलकम बीइंग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस एंड गिविंग अस योर टाइम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एवरीवन प्रेजेंट हियर आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू अगेन फॉर ऑल द नॉलेज दैट यू हैव इंपार्टेड टू अस थैंक यू thank you thank you very much dr maria thank you thank you sir thank you so much the pleasure thank you everyone uh, i would just request everyone to uh, wait for 10 minutes we have another session a surprise session for you for all the attendees uh, so if you could just wait for 5 more minutes so what about me i can go and uh, have a cup of coffee i guess yes sir absolutely yes, sir. thank you so much okay. for joining thank you everybody thank you for joining us
it's lovely mm -hmm. talking to you thank Good. you sir thank you thank you for all the inputs doctor thank you welcome ma'am uh thank you everyone aap logo ne join kara is session pe and uh, you have stayed with us for uh, almost one hour now thank you everyone for your time uh, at agg by antara we are constantly working on bringing uh, solutions to help seniors age with ease and joy and hamare uh, knee pain solutions and joint pain solutions ke baad we are also coming up uh, with fall prevention solutions जो कि हमें लगता है कि बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है फॉर ऑल द सीनियर्स इन इंडिया राइट नाउ एंड आई वुड पास ऑन द फोरम टू माय कलीग पूर्ति खन्ना हु विल टेक यू हु विल इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द ऑल द सॉल्यूशंस दैट वी हैव फॉर फॉर प्रिवेंशन थैंक यू नानिल थैंक यू फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग मी thank you everyone for joining in i i think uh, dr maria gave a very insightful session of all what we should be doing i think the uh, key takeaway that i could uh, link from what he said and uh, from the questions that you guys have also mentioned were uh, one stay active keep moving um, be very particular with your exercises and have uh, adequate support for yourself so for under fall that uh, fall solutions that we are working in antara um, the egc by antara we are bringing a set of uh, products and solutions which will help you in all three areas which dr maria has mentioned we are uh, we are continuously working on bringing in quality products for all the seniors here to help them walk with the uh, confidence to help them improve their balance and we have our experts uh, which are available at our health studios as well as at home who can come and assess every senior for their balance for helping them out all the mobility support they need starting from the walking sticks to walkers wheelchairs um, anything that they need to apart from that we are interestingly working on a portfolio where you can make your home fall proof where you can have your home um, i would say if anybody is saying anything okay sorry i'll continue so we are working continuously on bringing in some products which can help your home became uh, become fall proof which will include grab bars as rightly mentioned by dr maria which will include your anti skid mats and the uh, fall detection sensors which can make it more safer and uh, help you uh, help you uh, help you guys with having minimizing the injury and giving you more confidence while you are living at your home apart from this i think the, there is an exciting thing that daniel must be um, sharing with you colleague on the special offer and a surprise that we have for you all but before i hand it over to him the only request i want please uh, share your details if you want to get an assessment of done for your home as well as of yourself by our expert team where we can come and have a, a fall risk assessment done for the senior as well as uh, get your home assessed for what kind of products you should be using to make your home fall proof right uh thank you purti for all the information that you have given us uh i'll just take a second please uh, ma'am this i read about this that you have a fall prevention watch uh, what is what does it how does it work how does that fall prevention watch work yes we have a fall prevention watch in our portfolio which we have been uh, the, we have been giving to the seniors it has an algorithm where we we have a system where you watch uh, we, your watch this is a smart watch where we will be having sos button which can or get auto triggered when there is a fall that happens and the, uh, in the watch it's a sim based watch so you have a you have you you have basically three numbers which can be put in down for your caregivers in case of a fall the sos get triggered and a call goes to or your caregivers and the caregiver can have a video call done with you so we have two variants of watches right now one is a fall detection watch another is a fall prevention watch where there is an algorithm which can be uh, which 
It basically works on if there is a fall which is suspected in a senior basis of daily activities, basis the algorithm that we are building. So a trigger can go to your caregiver and an adequate support can be provided to the senior along with the detection or in case a fall happens. What is the cost of the watch, please? Can you show the details of the, if you can present the details, I mean, uh, yes, I think cost and details because I could not get your, one you mentioned, there's a fall detection, there is a prevention. If you have yes. some brochure, if you can show the brochure, then it would be kind of easy for us to understand the pricing and the difference. Yeah, sure. Give me a second. Apart from pricing, I would like to understand how it works, how it warns a person if someone is going to fall down. If they can give the... Give me a, uh, give me a second, ma'am. Sorry to keep you waiting. Can you, uh, can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. We can see the. Uh, I think Purti uh, will join us a minute. So this is a uh, fall, prevention, fall prevention and detection smartwatch that uh, AGZ has brought in, uh, which is powered by Fossil. Uh, so this uh, smartwatch is a fall prevention and fall detection technology both. So when you put it in your pen, so this... Uh, measures your gate uh, gate score it measures a lot of uh, uh, so it records your uh, uh, tracking it keeps on tracking hi daniel uh, uh, sorry uh, hi everyone sorry for uh, taking this long it got a bit stuck from the technical standpoint so uh, we'll just explain you how this watch works uh, I have... sorry Shall I go ahead? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have Karan with me who is an expert in this and he'll, oh. he's the one who has built this watch and will explain in detail how this watch works. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So Karan this side. Uh, am I audible? Daniel, yes. am I audible? Yes, okay. yes, yes. So I think this is a fall prevention and reduction smartwatch. There are a number of mechanism, mechanism on which this watch works. So it's starting from uh, what kind of and which category of this watch belongs to. So this is the Android watch in which we are having multiple sensors which detect how the fall prevention or detection works. So this is just an open air question. In this watch, we are having multiple sensors like uh, which monitor your daily lifestyle, uh, your all the health parameters. So we are having six parameters on which this watch uh, makes portfolio or makes profile of a person whoever is wearing the watch 
So the sixth parameter which I am referring to is one, the sleep tracking. How or when the person and what is the quality of their sleep? When the person goes to the bed, how the person, uh, what is their sleep? How many hours they go to bed? How many hours they sleep? Second, what are the heart rate, SpO2, respiratory rate, all the health parameters. Third, their sedimentary lifestyle. Ki, uh, what is the status of their lifestyle? Uh, what is their active and what is their non-inactive lifestyle? So uh, combining all these six parameters, the watch makes a portfolio or profile of a person wearing the watch. Uh, like I have given this watch to my father. He wears the watch 24 into 7. The watch will monitor each and every parameter which I mentioned. And the watch will make end-to-end -end detail uh, like a quantified data. Okay, the person sleep is like six hours daily he goes uh, sleep and uh, like 20, in 24 hours the person walk or do multiple activities in eight hours. So this will make a complete end-to-end -end data point of the person and based on all the data points, all the parameters the which watch is going to track, it will give the percentage or the risk of fall. Suppose uh, from the last one week, my all the parameters, health, vital, everything were stable. And <laughs> because of something, my heart rate shooted or there's a downfall in my heart rate or my sleep goes from 6 hours to 4 hours or my sleep duration increases from 6 hours to like 12 hours. Then the watch will trigger that there is some issue in the sleep or there is some issue in the heart rate. So by combining all the issues, all the trigger points, it will give the percentage there is an AI algorithm which we have uh, put in the watch on the back end. The AI will continuously monitor all the six parameters on daily basis. And whenever there is some shift in the heart rate, in the in any of the parameters, the watch will, uh, on the same time and real time, it will give an alert to the caregiver. Suppose I have give, uh, given this watch to my father. There will be a message comes on my uh, uh, like SMS that uh, heart rate has been increased in this percentage or this much of time. There is a irregular sleep pattern, irregular of uh, sedimentary lifestyle. And based on all this, this will give me some fall percentages. Ki like 80% the person may fall in coming week or the person can fall in coming two or three days. Based on that analysis, I will study the detailed report. I will go on to the dashboard of the watch and I will study each and every parameter ki yes, there is some concerning point. I need to talk to my father. Ki what is, uh, is there any gap in medication? Is there any gap in their lifestyle? And I will consult him before any event or fall happens. So this is how the uh, this fall prevention smartwatch works. So I am happy to answer any questions if you guys have. Uh, does anyone have any questions about the watch? Uh, how does it correlate with the chances of falling? One is blood pressure, increase in blood pressure or heart rate. But otherwise, yeah. what what are the other parameters which can tell? Yeah, so uh, good question. So... So as I mentioned, there are six parameters on which the fall, uh, the what detects that there may be some fall or uh, something can happen. So this is the heart rate variability. Uh, you can see my screen. I have also shared the screen. See how the prediction works. This is the algorithm. Now the watch will analyze your all the parameters like heart rate one, second is PO2, third BP, fourth is your respiratory rate, all these, and fifth is your sleep pattern. So all these five health parameters, then other than health parameters, the watch will also analyze your sedimentary. Sedimentary is the, uh, how active you are in your daily routine, how much walk you are doing, jogging you are doing, you are walking or doing some kind of activity. So this is what we call sedimentary lifestyle. Third, it will trap all your... Third, it will trap all your uh, like ADL activities. Okay, how frequent you are doing uh, in your activities or daily lifestyle. Based on all the parameters the watch have tracked and made your profile, based on that, it will deduct. If any changes or trigger happens on all six parameters, it can be of five parameters of health, 
it can be one parameter of sedimentary lifestyle it can be one parameter of your adl activity the watch will uh, continuously monitor all the seven to eight parameters and basis on that out of eight parameters trigger can be happen on two parameters out of eight parameter trigger can be happen on three or four parameters basis on the level of frequency le level of what is the difference in normal to the uh, like what is the peak to the bottom like heart rate 90 to 100 is normal if it shoots from 120 130 there's a massive difference so it will uh, at the real time it will give an alert to the caregiver or to the son daughter anyone who is tracking the functionality of the watch yeah one more question yeah if someone is having vertigo for example mm -hmm. and uh, if you are having vertigo and you are not careful you are you know going to fall down so how will it uh, give the warning and same thing can happen at night also if someone gets up quickly and yeah. there is imbalance so person may fall down so how will it warn the caregiver so early uh, sumanji uh, there uh, some uh, variations in this the watch cannot detect instant fall. Like in next very second, the watch cannot detect key what can happen in next very second. Because there can be number of reasons for the fall. The person can slip and they can feel a fall. In the case of vertigo, there is a sudden change. There is sudden problem occurs in a person and the person falls. Now, so the watch will predict if the thing is happening with the person from some time, like two days, three days, or over a long period of time, the watch will then make a portfolio of the person based on all the details watch algorithm has received. So the AI algorithm which we are using is not advanced, uh, is not so much advanced that this watch can prevent the fall happening in very next second or very uh, next 10 to 15 minutes. Yes, the, but this is very advanced. This can prevent the fall, which can happen in a week or two weeks or four to five days. And adding to what Karan said, I think uh, one of the features it does is it assesses the baseline of the person. So if a person has got vertigo frequently in, let's say, 10 days, 15 days, that baseline is being predicted or being recorded within the system. Once that the baseline is recorded, any deviation from the baseline is 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 a deterioration in the condition and this is what this algorithm would pick that there is a deterioration in the baseline and if there is a deterioration that's a proxy of deterioration in the health condition and deterioration and that proxy is uh, kind of can predict fall and the <clears throat> all these six parameters are clinically validated parameter for fall detection uh, we we have tied up with a Life Q, which is a US based organization, which has got these parameters right and tested in multiple patients to uh, get this, uh, this algorithm right. So, so this parameters are standardized parameters in that sense. Purti, if you can yeah, move that's, the. That's really good. The, yeah. Yeah. Purti, if you can move the uh, slide deck, this slide deck to the previous one. Yeah. That, Daniel, please move. Yeah. So, and I think what what we were trying to do, uh, this is what the mechanism of this particular watch is, how it predicts. That's what we have explained and we will be able to share. Daniel, if you can zoom it out slightly for the audience. Yeah. So that's what, uh, that is what Karan was trying to explain that initially it would have its own personal uh, learning of the baseline data, then it will cluster it. And once that clustering is done, then the predict prediction software would start working on. And that's the self-report that's going on. So that's how it works. It's a uh, one, it's a lifestyle watch, which gives you a feeling of wearing something which is a lifestyle. Still on the back end, it kind of keep capturing your data, keep assembling your baseline data and keep learning from your baseline. And then the another part of the watch is a fall detection, where we do not say that it is a prediction, it's a detection. Uh, that's a that's a second model of the watch, which is slightly cheaper than this, but it would it is a sim based watch where the problem it is trying to solve is that uh, for 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 example, in my case, my mother went for a walk, morning walk, she had a fall, and she could not inform us, and it took us forty five minutes to 
get that information out that there is a fall and this is multiple cases we have seen that there is a fall and uh, the information to the caregiver is delayed so we were trying to solve that use case using this second watch then if you move to that watch that's called as empower which has got a sim and it automatically calls three contacts in an auto ring manner till the time that the call is picked picked up and uh, so that's that's on the wearable side of it uh, i would request the audience that uh, one of the mission which we have taken is that look there is a lot of data around uh, the fall where does the fall happen why does the fall happen why how and everything so what we are trying to do is structure this entire piece um, into a solution where an expert from our side can help uh, an expert from our side can help assess the senior assess the place and then puts that inputs all these are standardized questionnaires put that input into a technology system and the technology system suggests that what are the probable things a senior can use or a probable things you can use at in your home to make your uh, risk of fall or decrease the risk of fall so that's that's what the fall prevention and detection solution was uh, thank you very much i think uh, thank you very much for attending and we are we will be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Uh, wh what are the charges for the assessment? Uh, Ma'am, this assessment is free of cost. There are no charges for this. Okay. And uh, how many days in advance do we have to request you for that? Ma'am, ideally, we prefer a one-day prior notice if this is a physical assessment. While our website has uh, assessment slots where you can go on, the, go, on, go on to our website and book your assessment as at your preferred time. Okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yes. I would request... Thank you very much. Yeah, this was quite useful. And this the, both these watches, I'm, yeah. different, I'm really sure that uh, these are going to be useful for seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so thank you everyone for attending. Just the surprise that all of us were waiting for. Uh, for all the attendees of this webinar, we have a special offer on the fossil watch that we just discussed about. So we are giving out a flat 20% uh, discount on the fossil watch. All you would have to do is just give us your contact number in the uh, comment section here and our representative will reach out to you and uh, will help you to uh, buy the fossil watch and also if if you are looking for a uh, fall assessment your home fall assessment or if you're looking for a knee care uh, pain assessment you can just put down your numbers in the comment section and uh, our team will reach out to you and uh, book your free appointment if anyone has any questions or any doubts please do let us know Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Yeah, Thank hello. Uh, my phone number is already there with you people because I got uh, a WhatsApp message about this meeting. So can I respond on that? Yes, sure. yes please. Please, please do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.